Uh, we're finally going to get into some integration. We'll do double integrals, triple integrals, and we'll talk about what those mean. But first we'll start with double. And to review, let's just talk about what they looked like in Calc 1. All right, in Calc 1, the integral from a to b of a function f of x dx was defined as the limit as n goes to infinity in the Riemann sum from k equals 1 to n of f of x sub k star times delta x sub k. You two find a spot, get to work, and you can turn your homework in after. Okay, so anyway, this is what you did in Calc 1. The notation might have been a little different, but essentially the picture looked something like this. Here's f of x. You subdivided the interval from a to b into what? Is that supposed to be an asterisk? Yes. Rectangles. Yep. Uh, yours is right here, sorry. Um, and so this basically represented the height of each individual rectangle. That's why this has an asterisk. And then this represented the what? The base, yes. And when you sum all the height times bases, you get a what? What do you get? An area. An area, yes. Anyway, so something like this. The width is delta x sub k. That would be one of these. And then whatever endpoint you're using, that would be your f of x sub k star. Okay, and when you sum all the areas of the rectangles, as you decrease the width and make the width as tiny as possible, which is what this means, you get the actual area under the curve. Okay, and everybody knows that, right? I don't have to spend too much time talking about that. Um, in Calc 2, now the problem is going to look something like this. Instead of being interested in an area under a curve, we want to know volume under a surface. So the volume problem looks something like this. Given a function of two variables, that is continuous and non-negative on a region R, in the xy plane. We want to find the volume of the solid enclosed between the surface z equals f of x, y, and r. So, imagine some sort of surface. Here's, it, um, let's just call it C equals f of x, y. And let's say the surface is 
positioned on the XYZ coordinate system so that it looks something like this. Okay. Now, in the surface, or I'm sorry, on the XY plane, we have a region R. Okay. So, let's say that's here. So this is R. And now if we map R upward, then maybe we get it to map out something like this, and that's the shape that it looks like when it intersects f of xy. We want to know what the volume is here. And now the process for finding the volume is going to be exactly like what we did here with the Riemann sum, except instead of doing the Riemann sum of several little areas, we're going to do the Riemann sum of several little volumes. Okay, and so what we'll do is we'll subdivide R into rectangles. And just so we can interpret all the notation, if we take let's say the center of one of these rectangles and map that point up here so that now this point corresponds to f of x sub k star and y sub k star and we form a parallelepiped This is not the world's greatest picture, I apologize. It's just a pair, it's just a prism with parallelograms as bases. Is that still using points in the center of the Yes. <coughs> yes, yes, yes. So what I'll do is redraw this section make it a little easier. <clears throat> okay, so this represents x sub k star, y sub k star, and then that corresponds to a height, f of x sub k star, y sub k star. Okay, so that's what this looks like. Sorry about the mess, but I think this is a better picture. So this little section here, that's what we're talking about. Okay, so the idea is that we can approximate the volume with several of these, and the idea is that it'll just be the area of one of these parallelograms or rectangles times the height of this parallelepiped. Okay, so that's our model for it. And what we're going to do is call the area delta A sub K. So think of the connections that we're making here. In Calc 1, you had not an area but a width, right? Does that make sense? In Calc 2, we have an area that we're shrinking down as much as possible. So that's delta A sub K. And if I multiply that area with the height, which is going to correspond to f of x sub k star and y sub k star, that will represent the volume of each one. Okay? So now, if we take this in Riemann sum notation, we can say that the volume is approximately the sum from 1 equals k equals 1 to n, so however many rectangles or uh, parallelepipeds we have, and we just take each individual product. I'm just going to rearrange the order here. but So we take height times base area, and we get a volume. And now as we increase the number of subdivisions that we go to infinity, then we get that the volume is not approximate anymore, but that the volume will be the limit as we subdivide into an infinite amount of rec uh, parallelepipeds of the sum from k equals 1 to n of f of x sub k star 
y sub k star times delta a sub k. It's a rectangle at the top. Is that, is that always going to be like the top face of it? Here? Yeah. Is that always going to be like straight lines? Yes. So think, think back to like here, when you did these, right, what did you do? It looked kind of something like this, depending on which endpoint you use, right? But it's not, it's not a rectangle. It's a, it's these, a these essentially are, but we're being general about calling them parallelopipeds instead of rectangular prisms. Yeah. Oh, so they're not like... They no, they're exactly, yes. Could you we're not going to, no, we're not even going to bother doing any of that. We're just going to keep things simple. So if you have a surface, imagine fitting a rectangular prism uh, that corresponds to a height, like in the center of each rectangle. Does that make sense? So they are going to be horizontal. They are going to be rectangles. We're just calling them parallelopipeds because it's a more general term. Okay, so this is the definition for a double integral. Um, I should mention that this is a picture where we have a volume that's completely trapped under a surface, but it's between the xy plane and the surface, so we interpret this as being a positive volume. Does that make sense? Uh, what did you do when the curve over here was below the x-axis? What values did you get? Negative. negative. So that's all it means. So if you get a negative, it just means that the volume is below the xy plane as opposed to above. Does that make sense? Um, and if you have a surface like this one where it goes above and below, then obviously the final answer will be just the difference between above and below volumes. Does that make sense? Okay. Eventually. Eventually, yeah. Okay. So if we go one step further, let me just write it down so we have it on my piece of paper here. The limit as n approaches infinity of the Riemann sum from k equals 1 of f of x sub k star, y sub k star, times delta a sub k. This now becomes the double integral of f of x, y. The delta x sub k became what in the integral? dx, right? Delta a sub k is going to become a d... We're going to go dA first, but eventually dx or dy, or dy and dx. And we just put the region that we're integrating over underneath both the integrals. So this is what the notation looks like. Okay, and we read this as the double integral of f of x, y over r. Okay, that's how we would read that. Okay? So now as far as evaluating them, we use what we call iterated integration, which essentially means you do one integral first, take that answer, and then take the integral of that. Um, so for instance... If we have f of x, y, dx, dy, from a to b, and then y is from c to d, to evaluate this, you would first perform the inner integral Okay, so you first integrate this function with respect to x, and your bounds on x would be the first integral on the inside. Whatever that is, okay, then you're going to take the integral of that from c to d. I'll just put this in red. So it's, the first one would be, in this case, in respect to the x. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Okay, so for, perform the inner integral first with respect to x, plug in the bounds, get your answer, take that answer, and then integrate again from c to d with respect to y. Okay, or vice versa. These can be interchanged. Uh, it doesn't ha does not have to be dx dy. 
It could be dy dx. Now, we'll talk about this later, but you can't just necessarily flip things and keep it simple. Sometimes the bounds are going to change drastically if you switch the order. But since we're talking about rectangular regions today, they will be okay. Um, so then this one would be evaluated with respect to y first. Pretty easy to work with. Okay, nothing too complicated today. So perform the inner integral, get that answer, and then perform the outer integral, and then you're done. Okay, so let's try an example. Wait, is that R just a function of the coordinates? This R? It represents the region that you're integrating over. You just put it underneath the double integral. It needs to be underneath. <laughs> so it's not just floating, but yes. Okay, so let's say we have integral from 0 to 3 and 1 to 2 of the function x squared y dy dx. Okay, so start with the inner integral with respect to y, right? What does the function become when you integrate? Treating x squared as just a constant right now. One half. Yep. Yes. And now this is from y equals one to y equals two. And I do some I do make a habit of writing the variable. Sometimes, especially when we get double triple integrals, you want to always make sure you know what variable you're plugging in 1 and 2 into. Okay, so we have that. This is still from 0 to 3, however. And now if I plug in the bounds, plugging in 2 first gives you what? 2x squared. 2x squared minus, and now if I plug in 1, 1 half x squared dx which, let's just clean it up, that's the same as 3 halves x squared dx. So we've gone from a double integral, now it's just a normal integral. So the integral of 3 halves x squared would be what? 1 half x cubed from x equals 0 to 3. Plug in your bounds. What do we get? Good. Okay, which, I mean, hopefully makes sense. If you understand that this represents a surface, think about where the region is. We're always going to be above the xy plane for these values, so you should get a positive answer. Okay, do me a favor real quick. I want you guys to do the same integral but backwards. So let's go 0 to 3 first, uh, but go dx dy. So just take a minute and do that calculation. Yes? So the first integral that you take is just kind of like a partial integral? Yeah. So you're going to have these other variables floating around, but you treat them as constants. You only worry about the y in this case. Right. Yep. How did I do what? Just just know things? The whole thing? So you understand that we're looking at that first, right? Well, are we when we take the integral with respect to y? 
Pretend like that x squared isn't even there. So what's the integral of y? Yes. Well, it's not, but we're treating it as such the first time through. Because we're only integrating. It's like, it's like we're undoing the partial derivative, essentially. Does that make sense? I don't know how much longer this video is going to last. My battery is going to die soon. Yeah. I think I'll cut it off when it gives me the warning. All right, anybody get an answer yet? It should be the same, right? If you're not getting the same answer, then you messed up somewhere. Okay, so check your work. Um, and again, as I said earlier, this is not a coincidence. Okay, these bounds are what we call rectangular regions, meaning if you looked at the xy plane, uh, the xy plane, when you go, let's see, y is from one to two. So here's 1, here's 2. x is from 0 to 3, right? Here's 0, here's 3. We get a rectangle. That's r. Does that make sense? As long as we have a rectangular region, you're allowed to interchange the order in which you integrate, and you literally just switch the bounds. You don't have to worry about changing the bounds. The bounds will change later, but for rectangular regions, they do not. In fact, that is what we call Fubini's theorem. Okay, so if R is a rectangular region, defined by X being between A and B, and Y being between C and D, then the double integral of f of x, y, dA can be integrated in any order that you want. So if you want to go x first, fine. Or if you want to go y first, that is also fine. So whichever one you prefer is fine. And for those of you watching, I have a couple more examples, but I'm running out of battery, so sorry. That's it for today.